Hand tracking is an amazing feature to have in any VR project. Something about being able to see your own hands move the same way that they would within a virtual space really helps a player to feel even more immersed within whatever VR world that they are currently in. And using Unreal Engine as well as an Oculus Quest, we can very easily implement a simple hand tracking feature so that way we can actually see our own hands move exactly as they would within a virtual space. So in this tutorial, I'm actually gonna walk you through how to set this up within your own Unreal Engine project. And so that way you can have hand tracking in your own VR games. But before we do that, if you like this video and you'd like to see even more like this, go ahead and hit the like and subscribe button down below. Let me know that you guys enjoy this video and you guys want to see even more like this and let me know what kind of tutorials you guys would like to see done in the future. With that, let's go ahead and jump right into the video. All right, so I've already gone ahead. I have a project open. Um, now, before we go ahead and actually get started, I do want to note two things here real quick. First off, I am doing this in Unreal Engine 5. However, if you are working in Unreal Engine 4, you should have no problem following this tutorial. It is pretty straightforward and the practically the same thing. There's one difference in the way that the player structured that will cause a difference. Um, and I will talk about that once we get to that point in the tutorial. Second thing I do wanna note is I will be using an Oculus Quest 2. And in order for this to work, you're actually going to have to package and deploy it to the Oculus Quest since it uses the internal cameras and the internal hardware on the Quest in order for this to function. Now, if you are using a Quest 1, then that is pretty simple. Uh, it's going to be the same exact structure. You just need to make sure that you're able to deploy, you're able to uh, package and deploy this project to your Oculus Quest uh, or Quest 2. Um, so with that, let's go ahead and get started in this. So first things first, we're going to want to make sure that we have the correct plugins enabled. Now, chances are you've gone ahead and done this through the VR template, either in Unreal Engine 4 or Unreal Engine 5. Um, and if you've done that, you should already have the plugin that you need enabled. But just to be sure, we're going to go and jump into the plugins. And the plugin we want to make sure is enabled is Oculus VR. So if we actually go all the way down here on the left-hand side under virtual reality, we should actually see Oculus VR here. You can see it's already enabled. Um, as I said, if you're running off of a VR template, this should be enabled by default. Uh, for me, it's enabled in just about every project I have. Um, but that's gonna be the first thing that you're gonna wanna check. Uh, and if you don't, then just go ahead and hit enable and you will have to restart the project as well. Next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to jump right over here into our project settings. I'm scrolling all the way down here on the left hand side. You're gonna find a section that's called plugins and we're going to wanna to find Oculus VR under this section. Now under here is where we're actually going to be able to enable or disable specific controllers. So to be more specific, we can enable or disable a uh, the Oculus Touch controller for either the Quest or Quest 2, or we can allow this controller to function and the hands as well. Um, so actually going down here, we can actually see there's a section here called hand tracking support. And this is where we can actually determine what we want to allow within our VR project. So clicking down here, you can actually see that we have three options, controllers only, controllers and hands, and hands only. Now this should be pretty self-explanatory, but controllers means that we're going to allow for the controllers to function for tracking as well as button inputs, all that kind of stuff. Hands means that we're going to go solely off of hand tracking. Controllers and hands means that we'll allow both and players can swap between at any point during the project uh, or when it, whenever they're playing. I'm actually going to go ahead and just set this to hands only. This same, this all this will still function if you leave it as controllers and hands, but I'm just gonna leave it as hands only just to keep it nice and simple. All right, so now at this point we have our hand tracking all set up uh, here in the project settings. Next thing we're gonna wanna do is we're actually going to want to go into our player and actually make it so we can actually see our hands within the world that we are in. So in order to do this, it's going to slightly differ depending on if you're in Unreal Engine 4 or Unreal Engine 5. If you're in Unreal Engine 4 and you're using the base VR template, the player is actually split into two pieces, the BP motion controller and the motion controller pawn. What you're gonna to wanna to use is the BP motion controller since you're going to need access to that motion controller component. It, here in Unreal Engine 5, it's all combined into one, so I'm just going to be using straight up a VR pawn. So going ahead and jumping right over here into the content browser, I'm going to go and open up the VR pawn. 
And I'm just going to jump it over to the viewport, but quite frankly, there's nothing that, that's going to need to be seen here. Now, you're going to want to take your motion controller component here, and I'm going to do something here first. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to disable display device model. And the reason for this is the device model will actually appear right here at your wrist if you don't do this, because this is where the motion controller component will actually go. Um, and it'll also be at a kind of weird angle. It'll be at like a weird side angle. So I'm actually going to disable this so that way we don't have to see this at all. So if I go ahead and just uncheck those. Now next thing we're going to do is we're going to want to add a component, or rather two in my case, called Oculus Hand. And I'm actually just going to rename this real quick. And we're going to call this one Oculus Hand Right. Now you do want to make sure these are attached to your motion control components themselves. Um, now, there is going to be a little bit of additional stuff that we're going to need to do to each of these. This is what's actually going to make our hand itself visible within the world that we are in. So in order for this to work, what we're going to want to do is go right up here. And first thing we're going to do is we're going to want to set our skeleton type. And you're going to want to set it based off of whichever hand you're on. You're also going to want to set a mesh type. And both of these are going to have to be set depending on the hand. So if you are um, in Unreal Engine 4, you will have to go into the event graph. And then when everything is first set up at begin play, you're going to want to manually change um, probably, the, probably the left hand to uh, hand left and hand left for mesh type. Since hand right is what is initially set up for the BP motion controller component. Um, now with that, that should be just about everything that you actually need to make your hands visible within the world. There's going to be, of course, the issue of how you actually use any sort of inputs. And you have two different options for this. So first off, you can actually see that we're able to assign uh, our own personal skeletal meshes, uh, material overrides, all this kind of stuff. And going down here into the bone name mappings, you can actually see that we have different bones for each finger, the hand itself, that we can all use, not only to map to the skeletal mesh, but we should be able to use this in order to capture certain gestures within, uh, within the level. The main issue with this, however, is that, as I said, I'm going to be packaging this and deploying it straight to my quest in order to test all of this. And the issue is going to be how do we actually get that data off? Um, and that's going to be the main problem. I'm not going to go into that in this tutorial. I'm not going to go too deep into any sort of inputs, but that's going to be one option that you have for inputs. Now, a simpler method that you're going to have is going to be right over here in project settings. We can actually go right up here to, where is it? Inputs, right under engine. And if I actually go ahead and drop down here on the action mappings, we can actually see that we have this whole section here called Oculus Hand. And you can see that we have thumb pinch, index pinch, middle pinch, ring pinch, uh, pinky, system gestures, thumb pinch strength, all this kind of stuff that we can actually use in order to make very simple gestures. And this is going to be based off of how close and far away each of your fingers are. The only one I'm actually a little bit uncertain about is the thumb pinch. I'm not really sure how that works. Maybe it's like this or something like that. I haven't tried the thumb pinch itself before, but I have used the rest of these and I know that the rest of these work. Um, so yeah, uh, with all that, that is very simple, simply how we set all this up. As I said, I'm not gonna do any sort of input stuff in this tutorial. I'm going to just make it so that way you can see our hands for now. All right, so here we go. Um, I have everything loaded onto the Quest now. So in case you've never tried to load an Unreal Engine project off a of Quest before, when you load it on from Unreal Engine, it'll actually show up under Unknown Sources, which you'll see near the bottom. It doesn't show up with all the rest of the installed or under all or anything like that. It, it's under its own category down here. So if I actually go and click on this, you should have already been able to see my hands were being tracked already. And once we get into the scene, you'll actually see that my hands are moving just fine as they normally would. Um, of course, it's you have the same limitations as you would with um, with uh, regular hand tracking, like you can't move your hands too close together or anything like that. If you overlap them, then one or the other will 
no longer be very clearly visible. You can see that everything itself does work just fine. So yeah, so that is everything working just fine. You can see I can still move around the whole scene, have hands move around with me f fully just fine too. So there you go. And with that, that is how you implement some very basic hand tracking into your VR project. Uh, as I said, it's fairly simple to implement just basic hand tracking. Inputs might be a little bit of a different challenge simply because of the accuracy of hand tracking with the Quest. And not only that, but getting that data from a built Quest project into Unreal Engine, again, can be a bit of a challenge. So that is something to keep in mind if you're going to be doing any sort of custom gestures with your hands or anything like that. But with that, that is the end of the video. If you enjoyed this video and you would like to see more like it, go and hit the like and subscribe button down below. And if you would like to see even more tutorials around hand track or anything, let me know down in the comments below. I would be very interested to see if you guys would like to see some custom hand tracking implemented into a project such as this or anything like that. I think that would be very neat. And with that, I will see you guys in the next reality. Thank you so much to my Patreon supporters. Boombox said, 9x and Shea.